I think my career path has been kind of defined by exchanging favors and finding kind of mutually beneficial relationships. Um, for my first student film, for example, the composer for the film was Moonshine. And I made a deal with him that, you know, hey, if you score my film for me for free, when I get out of film school, I'm going to shoot a music video for you for free. And, you know, the fact that he brought in Decisive and Chad to work on the soundtrack was a huge, huge plus as well, right? So the first music video I ever directed was for three Juno nominated artists. And, you know, I started shooting a lot more music videos and started establishing myself, you know, using that first calling card video and then started building up a reel. During that time, um, I got to know the guys who were running Wallace Film Studios in the west end of Toronto. And, you know, for years leading up to then, I had kind of made ends meet and gotten myself through school by house painting. And, you know, Wallace Film Studios at that time was this really run down film studio. Great facilities, but it, it looked like shit. So I gave them about a $8,000 paint job in exchange for about $24,000 worth of studio and gear time and at that time $24,000 was just an astronomical amount of money. So after that I had the opportunity for a couple years using those credits to experiment with gear I couldn't afford and studio space I couldn't afford and, and I think I learned a ton during that time. The film industry and especially trying to establish yourself as a director it's such a tough go you know because it's such a fun job you have such stiff competition and it's I think a lot of people get discouraged when they can't, you know, get inside. And the way I was able to crack that was I started uh, ghostwriting for a bunch of uh, commercial directors here in the city. And I think the way I was able to kind of justify that was, you know, I sold myself as a combination of two things. Uh, I sold myself as a combination of, I'm a guy that takes these tiny budgets and I try and make it look TV quality, right? I take that skill set combined with my ability to write uh, and and I think I was able to convince them that I would do a good job ghostwriting for these commercial directors. Um, and I did that for a couple years and then I think at that time I felt like, okay, I really gotta take it to the next level. So I applied to my current position, actually we're sitting here in the office right now, um, I was able to sell myself as a combination of somebody who knows the commercial voice because it's completely different from the dramatic or the music video or the documentary voice and so I, I was able to take my experience writing in this voice combined with again you know uh, low to mid-level production producing experience directing experience and I was able to sell myself as somebody who was able to run a production department for an ad agency so I think my whole journey to where I am or my whole career path has just been defined by taking two different things that may not feel like they fit together and you know taking the, those two circles and creating a Venn diagram out of them. You know it started with graffiti and writing you know and I was able to put those things together and find filmmaking and then it was filmmaking and house painting you know and I was able to get a bunch of studio time that made all the difference in the world for me. It's kind of worked out so far, so I think it's kind of the path I want to continue to do. Right now, um, I continue to work here at, at the ad office, but I think it's, it's important to find a balance.